Okay, so you want to make an RPG game, and you want to make this RPG game in 10 minutes. It's a bit unrealistic, but, you know, we we can work with this. Okay, so what do we need first? Characters. You got to write characters. We need characters in our RPG game. Every decent RPG game is going to have the most visually stunning, beautiful characters. I need my characters 3D, and I think about 20 of them will make a good RPG game. Oh, but wait, I forgot. We have only 10 minutes. So uh, let's just go with three characters. Bob, Sally, Joe. We don't really have time to design their character models, so just use your imagination here. So what do we need next? Hmm, let me think. Um, story. Every great RPG game has an amazing story. Let's go with that. It has to be a story filled with character progression, unexpected plot twist, lessons that make us a better person in the real world, and sadness. Yep, a whole lot of sadness. We need to be crying from the inside out by the end of this. Yeah, like Joe or Bob might have to take one for the team for us to make a really great game. And the loss of them will awaken Sally's inner strength, and she'll go Super Saiyan 2 to avenge their lives. And then she'll realize that Bob was working a secret life as a double agent, and she'll struggle with the internal conflict that she figures out where her allegiance lies, between the rebellion or the capital. The capital of the United States? Yeah, it's that kind of game, and that kind of message that we're sending out. Okay, great. We're now at 1 minute and 23 seconds, and we're looking pretty good towards the progress of this RPG game. I mean, we still need to build it. But no, let's keep planning it out. I'm sure there's one more major feature that we absolutely need to pin down before we can get going. We need music. We absolutely need the most epic soundtracks for our RPG game. So let's see if we can find a way to make a quick RPG theme in five minutes. Let's click on this one. All right, this looks pretty prompt. Wait, is that an ad? No, no, we don't have time for this. Nope. Yup, no, we're not doing this. Yeah, we're gonna find another way to do this. Let me think. Um, wait, we could make a beat by ourselves. Just don't. Perfect. That's it right there. We have our theme right here. And my clock says we're two minutes and 20 seconds in, so we're doing really good on time. Actually, we don't need to rush. We can kind of take our time from here. While we're at it, we might as well add this as an extra step. Inspiration. What games are you using to motivate you to create this one? Did you grow up playing Pokemon? Where you learned the values of friendship and forcing animals to do what you want? Or have you played Kingdom Hearts? Where you learned about the values of friendship and um, believing in the light and staying away from anything that's dark? <laughs> yeah, some of these themes probably aren't the best when you think about them now in 2019, but that's okay. Okay, there's a few issues, but let's focus on our own game from now and try not to worry about those problems. To summarize what we have so far, characters, Sally, Bob, Joe. Story, Sally, Bob, and Joe are childhood friends who grow up to fight against the capital, which turns out to be the United States. And somewhere in the middle of all that, Sally turned Super Saiyan 2 for a little bit. I think we have enough to start building this game. Let's use the programming language Python to help us build it. Now. You may or may not be coming from a technical background, and maybe the idea of coding might scare you. But don't worry, coding scares me too. Sometimes it's alright to fail or to feel frightened a bit, as long as you know that the end result is worth it. We know that we want to build a basic RPG game, so the best way to start is to figure out what our objectives are right from the beginning. We have our characters, we have our story, and then we need to figure out the game mechanics around it that will help us build the product in the end. Don't worry, I'll be a human translator and I'll help you decode what's going on on the screen. We want to create a template for a hero character. We have three heroes who will have some similarities, but they'll all be unique in their own way. They're going to have some similar stats like attack and defense or super, but at the same time, they'll all come with their own unique um, character creation. So that's why we want to create a general template that we can use to build them with. We can use a class in Python to create our heroes. And as you see here, I'm creating three different heroes, one for each of our main characters. Classes are a great way to group together methods and variables for our particular object that you want to use. So hero is the object in this case, and variables are units of values that we use to hold specific information, such as attack and defense. But what are methods? Well, in a nutshell, a method is just some kind of operation or performance that you want your object to do. Everything is a method, like adding two numbers together, subtracting numbers, and 
calling for your hero to activate their super. Here, we'll give them plus 50 attack and plus 50 to their defensive stats. This is meant to show just how organic it is when you're thinking of characters or certain kinds of things that you want to add to your game. What is a hero supposed to do? You want them to have a super, so you're going to create a super method and some kind of variable related to it. You want them to attack or to defend or to say specific things. You just organically build it from there. I promise you, coding really isn't that hard. It's a matter of getting all your creative thoughts from your head to your hands, to your keyboard, to your computer. And it's as simple as that. Well, it isn't exactly as simple as that. And I'd probably recommend looking at full length tutorials for how to actually program and to do what you want. But I promise you, it's not as hard as it looks. So here I wanted to make some unique actions and dialogue for all of our characters. Sally attacks with her trident and Joe with his magic wand and you get the picture. I want to give them more of a unique feel to their characters. Now what else do we need for our RPG? We need to fight, of course! We gotta fight in an RPG. There is no such thing as a peaceful RPG game. So it should be self-explanatory that we fight with a hero and an enemy. And that's what we're going to do with this one method that we're declaring. I was just notified by our producers backstage that this game is due in about 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So yeah, let's just speed through some of this up. So here I'm just going to create a general battle where you're given a multitude of options in each fight. You can either run away, you can attack, or you can press S to activate your super. In most role playing games, huh? It feels like the first time I've said that whole phrase in this video. But in most role playing games, these options are important because we want to give our players the freedom of choice, or at least the feeling that they have the ability to control whatever happens to them. And this freedom of choice extends to even our battle system. Maybe we don't even have to fight enemies. Maybe we can just run away. Well, here. You don't have an option to run away, you just get hit by the enemy, you're forced to keep fighting. But still, the theory of it still applies. So while we're working on our battle, we also want to think about our story too, and how exactly battles will apply here. We can think of our story in terms of a sequence of different scenes, each with their own setting and their own dialogue. And once we order it like that, it becomes a lot easier to flesh it out. Take our first scene for instance. We have our three heroes already grown up and then they encounter a Dark Knight who's a member of the Capitol. In our story, we'll have Bob fight the Dark Knight, but what Bob doesn't know is that he is no match for him. And before Joe and Sally can save him, Bob gets lost and gets converted to capitalism. Horrified by the money hungry shell of the former friend that they once had, Joe and Sally swear revenge against the Capitol. And yeah, that's our first scene. We got it down and I think it looks pretty good for about eight minutes. We had absolutely nothing in the beginning. And I mean, this doesn't look anything like a game right now, but you, you know, it's there. The foundation is solid. And I think this we can be proud of this. <sighs> no, we can't. We're now eight minutes and 38 seconds in and we haven't really made anything. And that's the point. There's no way to make most games in 10 minutes, let alone a good game, let alone a good RPG game. So do you consider the last nine or so minutes to be a waste of time? Or did you learn something? Did you learn something about coding? Maybe story design? Maybe more about those childhood games that you might not be able to look at the same anymore. If you end up taking anything away from this video, I just want you to know that nothing is impossible unless it's in 10 minutes. Then a lot of things are impossible to do. Thanks for watching.